I never want my kids to mess up and think, Mom is going to kill me. Instead, I want their first thought to be, I need to call my mom. Mom, I didn't mean it. I I'm sorry, cries my daughter. And in between loud sobs, she rocks her body back and forth, trying to soothe herself. She says, what am I going to do? She says this out loud, but no one answers because she's alone in her room, trying to get up the nerve to call me and tell me that she messed up. Now, kids make mistakes. The last thing you want is your child to be afraid to come to you when they need you the most. Yet many parents scold their children when they find out that their child screwed up. And over time, this scolding instills fear. As children get older, their mistakes can have more significant consequences. Car accidents, drug use, pregnancy, the list goes on. But no matter what the mistake is, big or small, we want our children to come to us for help so they don't have to face adversity alone. So how do we establish a relationship with our children strong enough so they won't shy away from calling our phones when they need our help? I think it comes down to one thing, trust. Your child has to trust you. If your response to mistakes is anger and yelling and punishment, then it is natural for your child to fear your wrath. Now, I'm not saying there shouldn't be consequences. I believe in consequences. I'm also not saying that you shouldn't be angry or disappointed. But we must be careful how we respond to our children's mistakes because how we respond establishes how our children will handle mistakes for their whole life. <gasps> Children afraid to make mistakes don't take risks, and they spend their life hiding. They lose out on valuable experiences, and children who don't learn from their mistakes will repeat those mistakes over and over again. So it's my belief that we need to help our children navigate through mistakes so that they can learn from them and better themselves. on how you can talk to your child when they make mistakes. Okay, tip number one, don't freak out. This is tough, but if you freak out when your child confides in you, then you will lose their trust. Practice controlling your own emotions and stay calm. Tip number two, don't say, I told you. Even if you warn them of the consequences of their choices and they still didn't listen, you can't say, I told you so. Because being right is not the goal. Instead, the goal should be to support them in learning from their wrong choice. So this is not a competition to prove that you're right and they're wrong. Because showing that they are wrong doesn't teach them better behavior. Tip number three, don't ask questions like, how could you have done that? You know better. Or why did you do that? Because these questions don't teach your child anything either. In fact, you're likely to get the response, I don't know, or excuses for their behavior. Tip number four, listen to understand and find meaning for their actions. Don't listen for their mistake and their wrongdoing. Instead, look for understanding. Tip number five, establish that you are a safe place of support and the goal is to create trust and security for your child. You do this by being predictable, consistent, and not screaming, lecturing, or over punishing your child. Tip number six, help them find solutions and learn the lesson the mistakes can teach them. So how do parents listen to understand and establish safety and help their children learn from their mistakes? You need to ask the right questions. This is the secret sauce formula. You must ask the right questions. Questions that search for meaning and understanding and enables you to explore solutions together. 
So what kind of questions do that, Christina, you might be asking? But don't worry, I'm not gonna leave you hanging. I'm going to give you some questions that are examples of this, and you can change them to be more age appropriate for your child and your household. I highly suggest that you keep track of these and keep them handy so that you can use them the next time your child makes a mistake. All right, what are those questions? Let me tell you, here we go. How did it come to this? What events led up to this mistake that influenced your decision? Did you expect this to happen? What do you think the outcome would be? Would you change anything that you did? Would you change anything that happened? Did anyone influence you or did you come to these choices all on your own? How has this changed you? What have you learned from this experience? What can we do next time to to either prevent this from happening again or to handle the situation better. See, the right questions allow your child to process their mistakes and learn from them. You couple this with a parent who isn't yelling at them, but instead listening to their side of the story, and now you have created an environment for your child to rise above their errors and be a better person. Children can't do this alone. They need you. They need your support. They need your guidance to grow. This is how you can be an impactful parent. Thank you for listening today. Remember to subscribe and share this podcast with a friend. And don't forget, the Impactful Parenting Podcast is an extension of the Impactful Parent community. Go to the Impactful Parent website and download the free Impactful Parent app so you don't miss a parenting tip that can help you and your family. Thanks for listening today. So go to theimpactfulparent.com and see you next episode.